Okay, so uh, I'm very glad to be here. I uh, have heard of your region, of the country. I've been to New Mexico. I've been to many states, by the way. Um, and New Mexico is very nice. What? Pardon me? Oh. Louder, I'm sorry. Louder. Okay, I'm going to go like this. Okay, thank you. I'll switch to Oprah mode. Okay, so as I was saying, New Mexico is my place. I walked here from the nice uh, uh, hotel and I experienced cars. So I felt the car society. I used to live in Dallas for a while, so I felt that similarity because when it's hot, you don't want to walk outside. I get that. So, and I got here and I started taking pictures. And I have about uh, 39 minutes, I'm big on time. And I believe that uh, everything should be about some kind of tangible value exchange. You came here, you've eaten lunch, you're kind of sleepy now. That was high calories, folks. Those are Big Macs times a few, right? So, uh, you may be kind of stunned a bit by the calories. So, I'd like to ask all of you that if you have a question about something that I'm talking about and you were meaning to ask a question or something, just text me right here and I can get your question anytime while I'm blah, blah, blah. Okay? And then what I'll do is I'll stop because I can answer your question. Because oftentimes what happens is people, so people talk and you can't ask any questions. And so I invented this new way to be interactive. It's also very introvert inclusive. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? We're like the, 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 the three excellent extroverts that get up and they're like, oh no, I wanted that question. Direct line here. Okay? So go ahead, all right? And this number will appear throughout the slides, so it's not lost, but there it is. Okay. All right, so um, I am a student of change. Uh, change is this wonderful, terrible thing because change is always needed, but. It's okay if they change, uh, not okay if I change, because that sounds like work. And one of my favorite quotes uh, by Eric Shinseki is, if you dislike change, you're going to dislike irrelevance even more. It kind of hits you, right? You're like, oh, okay, all right, okay, maybe I want to change. But just now, I had this amazing lesson. I gave you three eyes, by the way. Sorry about that. Um, I had this great moment with Jamie. And she defined change in a new way for me. She said, I quote, people aren't ready for change unless the alternative is provably better. Right? That provably. Jamie, you nailed it. Because you want to know with 100.0% that this change that's coming down the line is going to work. Right? Because every day you've had pancakes at McDonald's and they were awesome. And then one day, like, I think you need a special avocado spritzer, cupcake, mac, whatever, right? And like, no, I don't know about that. That may not give me sustenance, sustenance for the whole day, right? So you kind of doubt it. And if someone, if you, the, the piece of paper says, I give you 100% guarantee it's going to be okay, then you might do it, right? But on that hand, McDonald's isn't going to do that for you. So, right? So no one wants to change to something new because there's risk involved. And people who are trying to bring out change with something new are likely to fail because it isn't guaranteed. Likely meaning not truly likely, but a little likely means likely, right? <laughs> to fail. So uh, that's why I, I had such an uh, enjoyable time listening to my colleague Ashley Axios over there. Can I get another round of applause for Ashley? That was a, uh, I just kind of, uh, I kind of went away thinking about stuff and um, uh, she had 15 or so tips about how to approach how you work as a creative person and work with change, work against change in some t in cases, but work with change and also foment change. Uh, number six, give space for emotion really caught my attention because when you're trying to convince someone that that change has a high probability of working out, what's the first thing you're gonna do? You're gonna PowerPoint them, right? You know, our survey shows that 92.8% of the people will come on board. Or, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, spreadsheets, numbers, and like, I wrote a five-page white paper. 
You know, it's going to prove it to you, right? And it's got facts and facts. Oh, it's 917. No problem, introverts. It says, thank you from the introverts. Come, come. Your house is in my phone. People want to hear facts because people think facts are going to change your mind. But to Ashley's point, the motion in part is really important. And I'm a big believer in having them all. You know like the, uh, you go to buy food and there's this item on the menu, it's a fisherman's platter. It's got the scallops, it's got the shrimp, it's got the, I go for that. I love variety. And in that variety, uh, bringing about change, uh, facts, I love facts. Uh, but emotions, I love emotions too. And uh, if you might notice, I have this uh, t-shirt on. This t-shirt, it was designed by Christelle Rossignol. She is on Ashley's team. And uh, it, has a, uh, it has a G motif. Do you see G here? It's hidden. There's also bunnies here on the edges if you can't see them. Very festive. And on the back, there is a, you know the, you know the Cheshire cat? Cheshire cat, so the cat goes invisible and you only see the smile. It's got a Cheshire Wapu. Do you see it? I'm like, what is that? And the Wapu's hiding from you. Um, and why are these kind of items being created by the automatic design team? It's because we believe that this ecosystem that we're all living in needs that emotional element. Uh, that goes beyond the code, goes into this sense of belongingness that's so strong uh, to WordPress. And so, it's so one example. Uh, this isn't. Uh, I know, this is a new thing I'm doing recently. That uh, uh, I, I realize that one big problem we have in the WordPress ecosystem is we're kind of stuck in the desktop world. You know this thing called a desktop computer. Yeah, a laptop. You know, everyone's got laptops. Not true, right? Everyone has smartphones. So anytime we spend 80% of our time figuring out a desktop problem, we're losing market share to a world that's moved over to not just smartphones, but every person out there has moved to that. So uh, internally, and I was thinking maybe I'll make a t-shirt too. Um, who's been to uh, London? London visitors? London? London? You know that, that sign? It says, mind the gap. Mind the gap means there's a gap as you're going to step onto the train. And that gap is big. <laughs> so if you just kind of walk in and do that, you fall. So uh, mind the mobile is a phrase that I like to say as often as possible, together with WAPU, uh, because it becomes, becomes more friendly that way. WAPU makes everything more friendly. Um, and Mind the Mobile uh, is hard if you love desktop. Like, who loves desktop? Come on, everyone loves desktop. Come on, bigger screen, more, more ways to navigate, pick perfection, you know, it's so good, right? Uh, it's hard to, to imagine this mobile thing. So I just want to say that it's, it's out there. It's growing. It's already grown pretty much. It, and uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of an issue. Now, I love this quote, that success is achieved by developing our strengths, not by eliminating our weaknesses. This is by Marilyn Boss Savant. She's like a super Mensa genius. And I bring this up because uh, I've been fortunate. I've joined Automatic uh, a little over a year ago. And I've had the uh, gift from all of you to be invited to attend many WordCamps. Uh, not just here in the US, but also in Europe, uh, and soon in Asia as well. And people ask me, why do I go to WordCamps? It's because I believe that all the strength of WordPress is living in the WordCamps. And the only way to understand it and fight for it is to visit as much as possible. So I'm so glad to be here, you know? It's just such a, such, a, such a thrill for me. And that's why, another example is this t-shirt has just come out. It's in, it's in horizontal and vertical. It says WordPress.org. Established in 2003. 
I mean, internet time, that's a century ago, right? But, you know, when you see someone wearing, around, wearing an Airbnb dev shirt, it's like, you know, pretty cool. But establish what year? You know, this is going way back. So we're trying, to, we're trying to recreate some of the pride that you all feel. Now someone can say, well, what's a t-shirt going to do? Like, how's it going to change anything? Well, it's going to change anything at all, but it's going to open a door. Open a door to seeing ourselves in this ecosystem. Uh, there's another shirt called WordPress University. Um, I met so many people who have told me that they learned how to code. They learn how to have a trade because of WordPress. And so it's essentially an alumni, net, uh, uh, it's an alumni network of people who are practitioners. Because in large senses, the tech industry, the tech industry has excluded so many people. Uh, if you uh, know the stories about Silicon Valley, uh, that it is an amazing place that has tended to be more less inclusive than the rest of the world, that's very easy to see from the outside, right? But WordPress has been not that way because it's owned by so many people together from so many walks of life. And that's a huge strength. It's an advantage that very few technology products have. So uh, these things that put a, put a label onto it, make it visible, I think are very important. Now, those of you, so who, who's new to WordPress in the last couple of years? Like, I kind of ended up here by accident. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, when people ask why WordPress is interesting or important, um, I point out that anytime you'd like to introvert, send a question. Very open. Um, I point out that I remember when the net was young. Who remembers when the net was young? Who remembered, uh, yeah, who remember ARPANET, all those early server days? You know, there was a time where you couldn't email someone. You had to bounce it off five computers to get to that person, and you had to list the computers to route it, right? So it was, it was, it was the old days, you know? And um, uh, the computers weren't designed for everyone to be used. You know, there was a time where people said the world will only need seven computers, stuff like that, you know? Um, and it's a very complex system, and it emerged from military needs of communication, to kind of accidentally entering into the research world to support academic communication, knowledge sharing. And then somehow it kind of spilled out into the real world. But the big moment didn't happen until 2008, which is the same time as the global financial crisis, but the same time when smartphones started to get traction. And that's when every living person could have access to a high-end computer in their pocket or purse. Now, before that, however, before the smartphone revolution, though, it was still the Wild West, and the winners weren't clear. And the network is really complex. And there were many developers trying to free the capability of this network stack of technology. A very complex network that really one single mind couldn't understand. Uh, many papers were written about it, but the chaos of it was interesting. I remember at MIT, I just remember the, one of the core networks was called ChaosNet because they're just, uh, it's just like, whoa, what is this magical alien technology? We don't fully understand it, but it's working out okay. So this is how the net is, was, and will continue to be. I should note that all of you who work in WordPress know there's a thing called a command line. Right? It's like, whoa, I'm down here in the matrix. <laughs> right? And it's funny because it looks exactly the same as it did in the 70s. It's like the same thing. So I was like, wow, that thing's been in there for a long time. You know? And like many things that have been for a long time, you have what's called deferred maintenance problems. Do you know, like, in a, or in technical debt is a different way to say it, but um, everyone knows, that I would talk about London. So there's a statistic I read that 40% of London's water gets lost in the water supply system, the underground supply system, because of all the leaks in it. 
So imagine that you're pushing water into the London homes, knowing you're going to lose close to half of the water. Um, but luckily, technology isn't like water. Uh, it's stackable, it's layerable, it's fault tolerant. So um, the layers are strong, uh, but they're complex. And there's this influential paper that came out in 1999 uh, called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. Who's never heard of this? Raise your hand. Okay, excellent. Because Knowing this, is, knowing this can open a whole like magic wardrobe door to understanding why this WordPress thing is truly odd and interesting. Because there was a time when technology companies, there are very few, controlled everything. And there were freedom fighters, super coders, who sought to make free versions of software. And like all these human things we do, we kind of like bifurcate. Like, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. Well, I'm not going to follow you. I'm going to go this way. And suddenly, you know, the crowd separates, right? You know, like any kind of like sci-fi movie? Oh, you're over there. Yeah, I'm over there. I'm here. Okay, I'm over here. All right, yeah. Um, there was a small group that believed that they could create a better version of the Unix operating system. Uh, having a small group, small team develop in privacy and every once in a while they'd share the code for everyone to compile and run. That was the GNU movement. And then there was this man, Linus Torvalds. He thought maybe what we'll do is we'll start writing this Unix clone and we'll let anyone change the source code. Like anyone. Anyone. Now, of course, people over here are like, that ain't ever going to work. That's not going to work. This is proven that, that this can't work. You can't just open the whole thing and say, let's go build it together and have a party, and boom, it's going to win. But it won. And why did it win? It won in large part because it mirrors the system it's in. The system itself is too complicated to understand by 1, 6, 10, 20 people. But a collective of hundreds and thousands of people suddenly becomes possible. And when you think about the history of software systems that succeeded like this, like Linux, WordPress is one of the famous canonical examples of the bizarre approach to development, which sounds like bizarre, right? Can you imagine, like, okay, let's all build this up together? It's not possible, you think. But the technology itself, the underlying network technology itself, affords the possibility. But it's the people that fill in that gap. And the people are working with everyone else's best interests in mind. And that's, you know, especially in this day and age, it's pretty special. That's what coming to work camps, I can just see it all over the place. Because a bazaar is, looks like this to someone, right? It's messy. It's impossible. Now, when you think about the cathedral versus the bazaar, however, people will jump to conclusions, right? It's like a Coke or Pepsi. Is that dangerous here? This is a Dr. Pepper place? Uh, I never know where, what kind of part of the country. So anyways, um, uh, here we go. 314 says, WordPress University, School of Inspect Element. Tongue emoji. Uh, thank you, 314. Um, so some people believe in the bazaar. They are the true open source warriors. Some people still believe in the cathedral. Uh, companies especially believe in the cathedral, right? It's like, I'll give it to you when I think it's okay, and bosses, bosses, bosses says it's okay, and now it's okay, and don't you dare open it. <laughs> and I'll come back and I'll get you, give you the next one, right? Um, so who is it good for? Which side? Now, here's the problem. So remember I said how like 2008 happened and this thing, like this phone thing became a Star Trek communicator device that every living person could use, even like a two-year-old or a one-year-old, maybe like they have dogs using things nowadays too, so it's pretty amazing, right? Um, and it became lucrative. 
at the same time too. And money was infused into the ecosystem. And so what happened is open source ecosystems didn't get the level of funding that the cathedrals, the companies, received. And so we can say that's okay, that's no big deal because before 2008 there weren't that many computers. You can still kind of compete. But after 2008, because of smartphones and everyone has a computer, this looks like good money. So imagine the spigot turned on once again even stronger and that spigot not hitting the open source world. Um, what happens? What happens is this experience gets better. Not just like a little better, like a lot better. Because it's trying to solve regular people's problems. When I say regular people, I mean like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> She's an amazing regular person, right? She's not going to sit here and like, you know, command line and like, you know, hit control C. You know, I mean, she's busy. She's got her like stuff to do, right? So the consumer side, high investment, targeting people who don't want to sit on these systems that we have gotten used to on desktop. Uh, found ways to make a lot of money off, out of them and pour it back into it. Making experiences that a lot of people love. Like, who loves Instagram? How it feels? Come on. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. That's an expensive system, right? Like, who likes typing stuff into Google? Fast, huh? Expensive system, right? So, a lot of money is put into this, you know? A lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of talent came into it. So, we have a problem in that the bazaars are not competitive with the cathedrals. Um, and the problem with the bazaar, if you design by bazaar or called design by committee, bad stuff happens, right? It's like, I think it should be like this. I think it should be like this. I think it should be like this. In the end, you have to cut consensus compromise. In the end, there's no opinionated experience. And so I don't believe that the bazaar model is a good way to create a coherent experience for uh, the large majority of people. It requires, to what Ashley was saying, understanding who this is for and recognizing that who this is for, maybe five types, 20 types, a thousand types, and then just choosing which ones to be good at and just narrowing in on that experience. And mind you, this is costing time, it's costing money, um, that a lot of volunteers don't have to put into. Right? So, um, the, the theory I have of going back to uh, uh, the idea of proving something to you, I can't prove that this is going to change, but I have a strongly held belief that it can. Uh, my strongly held belief tells me that right now we're like big gigantic bazaar, eeny tiny cathedral. I think we have to make that, what do they call it, cathedral, mosque, temple, sig, has to get a little bigger to be able to more clearly define the experience needs of more people. Now, why is that hard? It's hard because, anytime introverts, um, it's hard because, you know, today, like I was saying, like who, who's been to a Google site before? Google, all right, right. How's the food? It's good, huh? No, not so good. No, mine was good. The food, yes. The food of the Google site. Okay, who's been to Google site? Food's good. Food's good. It's like a girl's it's like heaven. You know? It's, it's amazing. Um, this is Google's uh, 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 hiring site. Um, so anyways, um, recently this uh, article came out on Google uh, and the outline. It reads, Google is really good at design. Google is really good at design. So, and when I joined Automatic, and Matt invited me to come on board, and I was lucky to have Ashley come on board too, it's exciting. Um, he said, you know what, Google's really good at design. Can we be good at design too? And I said, of course. Because WordPress was the best designed alternative. Uh, I used WordPress in 2004, 2005, 2006. Who remembers when it was the best design solution? 
who was there, you remember it, right? It was the best solution. It was the best, oh my gosh, it's so much nicer, it's much better designed. Okay, so what I like is that there's old DNA that we have to reawaken. Don't worry, it isn't bad like Lord of the Rings. There's no like, you know, scary stuff, hopefully. But we're going to reawaken that potential. So, I believe tomorrow, sometime in the future, the outline will say, WordPress is good design for all. And me and my colleagues are working to imagine how we can execute together as a global community to see this happen. Now, you might be sitting there saying, that sounds like a great story. Sounds kind of good. Maybe I want the t-shirt. What color do you have? You know, can you ask these questions? Um, uh, the reason why I believe that the, we, will, we will be able to uh, catch up in some shape or form on experience side is because our parts are good. So parts are good. Like uh, I've been traveling to different airports along the way here and everywhere I go, I get a salad, it's got lettuce, onions, chicken. Next salad, lettuce, onion, chicken, right? One costs, you know, $19, one costs $8, but they're all kind of the same. It's good salads, right? But you need good ingredients. So a good example is by one automatic designer, I want to show you this. This is an example he made a couple nights ago as a proof of concept I want to show you, which is, um, you know, everyone's like, loves VR, AR. If you're a tech person, like, oh my gosh, you know, I just got this, the, the next version of goggles, whatever kind of thing. This is a simple uh, A-frame uh, A -frame VR based system talking to the REST API. By the way, the REST API was a key investment uh, on the WordPress end, making it possible for any service to talk to a WordPress site through a separately written program. And this is talking to a website, a WordPress site right now. Um, and this is a post. And if you click on this and put on the little goggles, you'll see it in 3D. And it can move around. Now, would you ever need this? I don't know, maybe in the future when these things uh, switch over. But at least it tells you that we've got the right stuff, right? We've got the chicken for the taco salad. It's right there, it's, okay? And I wanted to show you this, but I can't play the video very easily. So I'm going to see. The, for some reason, the USB-C thing takes over the audio, so you can't hear it. But um, uh, one thing I've been doing with my colleagues is role playing. Who knows role playing? Role playing, or you like play? Okay. So, have you noticed that if you own a voice-enabled device in your house, you're talking to a computer? Have you noticed that? Like Alexa, whatever. Watch out. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, you know, you're just talking, right? So I realized that we can make up a lot of conversations. So me and my colleague Bob pretended that I was Alexa. I don't make a good Alexa, but I'm pretty good. So I was going to show you a simulation of uh, Bob talking to Alexa and uh, putting posts up, changing things around. Uh, and when we saw it, we're like, oh, the parts are already there to do something like that if we wanted to if you wanted to. So I want to note that the lettuce is there too. So everything is possible for the future. But we've got to solve the present. Uh, we've got to solve the present. And we can't get distracted from the technology. So who here is a developer? Right, developer. What do you love the most? New technology. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm at MIT, so I'm with you. I love stuff, the new stuff. It's good, it's good, it's good. The problem is, the new stuff doesn't solve the present day problems of experience debt. And the new stuff is designed to appeal to a narrow audience that loves this stuff. So you might think it's the most important thing in the world. But the average person isn't there yet. So how do we target the non-technical person to grow our success is going to require, back to the example that I actually showed this morning, of narrow focus around who we are serving to be able to design full experiences for them. 
Now, how do you do that? Focus on this for all thing. This for all sounds pretty big, right? It's like, that's, that's, that's a little too big. You didn't sign up for before all. Well, for all is cool because the for all of the world has changed. You know, I was lucky in my early 30s to be the liaison from MIT to an organization called AARP. I was in my early 30s. I was like, what is this thing, you know? I go to Washington, D.C. every other week. I visit this two blocks in the D.C., gigantic towers. It's like, this is ARP, wow, this is cool. Uh, and walk in, they had the most advanced HD studio. It was so far ahead. Um, and they predicted that a large number of people in America and the world were aging at a rate uh, that was different than the past because, number one, the boomer generation. Number two, medical science is prolonging our lives. And they kept saying to me that this is a whole group of people that uh, will want to be engaged in something. So when I say for all, or when Ashley says inclusion, it includes this opportunity that this all is a whole new all. And there's a big opportunity there. Ooh, I don't have questions, okay. Uh, I'm gonna pause for a second. 505. Do you believe WordPress and open source in general can survive in a post-net neutrality world? How do you see creativity flourishing when corporate interests will control the dissemination? Well, number one, I believe that if systems like WordPress, which, which is one of the largest, if not the largest of its kind in this category, it needs to survive because it's holding up the open web. So it isn't a matter of, it doesn't matter if it'll survive. Uh, it needs to survive, not just for us in WordPress, but for what all you know. It's give, it gives freedom to people. So I think mean, that's why we wake up in the morning or come on a Saturday. Folks, it's the weekend. Um, it's an important thing. And how do you see creativity flourishing when corporate interests will control the dissemination? Well, I want to flip that around. I want to flip it around a bit. Okay, so, so there's this thing called the open web, right? The open web means the web. Right? You just type in HTTP, you see some stuff, it's open web. Uh, there's also the dark web, I know that, but you know, the, the open web. And closed web is like Twitter and like the walled garden, Facebook, etc. right? So I think one key, they were already seeing it already, and our designers recently posted about how to blog better, how to blog to get a better traction. And the common theme was, hey, actually engagement isn't high in the open web. So we have to send our traffic to the closed web. Which is good, because the web is bigger, right? And I think sometimes in the open web, we think we're beholden by the closed web, but the closed web needs that. And, and when, we, when we get them back over here, we have a chance. So I think the two are linked. I love open web, closed web crossover. 505. Does this mean WordPress will take more control of the admin experience, more consistency? I don't really know. Um, and I say that uh, because WordPress is not owned by any single individual. Uh, but you will see us sharing everything we learn how to design for people uh, as automatic design in an open source way. Like Ashley shared the inclusive design checklist. That's open and available. Now, everything we do, we want to do in this same network, open way. That's right here, perfect. So this list, the, the, this list is available on design.blog slash inclusive. Oh, what's this headline over here? Uh, uh, yesterday, um, a friend pointed me to this, this, uh, this site, uh, actually this page on Quartz. It says, your company's Slack is probably sexist. I thought this was an amazing article. So just Google it later if you haven't. Who's read this article before? Who's read it? It's just amazing, but it really kind of like helped me understand certain patterns in Slack in a whole new way, and not just for women, also for men as well. So just check it out. But it's, it's the fact that a lot of systems and technology weren't designed for people. They were designed for technologists. And this narrow-mindedness is meaning that the, the products themselves are not very good. And so what that means 
is there's room for improvement, which means there's room for growth and opportunity. So how are we gonna so how are we gonna like imagine a world where there's better design, as Area 505 asked us now. Um, we're betting and Ashley mentioned it also, Muriel. Uh, Mural is a project that we have launched to create a common uh, vocabulary for how we design uh, on the internet and how we make products more inclusive, how we craft them with different kind of design constraints that involve mobile, and also, how do we make them things that are truly emotional, delightful, but driven by data? based decisions uh, versus, I think this is a really good idea, I'm going to go do it, uh, have, a hypothesis, have, have a hypothesis, test, and go. And Muriel will ideally provide resources that are cathedral-like in their prescriptiveness for more people to use. Think of like, a, do you know Android material design? It's kind of a useful, reusable standard. So like that, but with more guidance around inclusivity uh, and more relevance to open source and the open web. Okay, we're good. All right, any questions over here? 917, what are some of your ideas for the future of design inclusivity and branding in WordPress? Any specifics with timeline you can share? Um, I thought that if you, if you Eric code 917, starting prefix 282, uh, haven't seen Ashley's talk or you're in the other room, please watch that to get a grounding, a foundation of where we're headed. In terms of a timeline, uh, as fast as possible. But as you know, speed doesn't work all the time. So it's going to happen organically. I apologize it's going to, this is going to happen overnight. But if it did happen overnight, you'd probably hate me. Uh, so it's going to be slow, organic, natural, normal, uh, with a lot of failure along the way, quite frankly. Um, because when you think about the, you know, everyone loves SWOT. It's a, management, it's a managerial sort of like framework, like one of many frameworks. But I like just the strengths and weakness part. Um, and when I think about how we are, we are at Craft, we're really great at Craft on desktop and all the browsers, but not great on mobile. Both are very hard problems, mind you. On the data side, we have a hard time figuring out who to design for. Yes, two minutes. Yes, thank you. Lastly, an inclusion side, there's all kind of inclusion stuff. And it's really good stuff. And as you dig into it, from an experience perspective, it's so exciting. Because it means unlocking these technologies we use for so many new kinds of people. All right, we have two more minutes left. I have questions left over here. Let's see what I was going to, I think I got through almost everything. That's good, that's good. Uh, if you're asking what mural will look like, it will look something like this. Uh, simple graphics to explain different phases of how you design. Because design in the old days was designing icons, uh, picking colors and things like this. But design is more about a process and a full experience. And once that kind of thinking can enter the WordPress ecosystem, we'll slowly start to see experiences improve for targeted people groups. And once the competency sets in, uh, we'll start that road to uh, positive change, I believe. Okay, I'm on time. I love being on time. Thanks so much for your attention, everybody.